during the whole meeting. Mm, if you would like to raise a question or share your view, please raise a hand and wait until you are asked. Alternatively, you can type your question in the chat box. Please prepare your mobile phones. We will carry some survey using Mentimeter. And please also note that the webinar is recorded. I have a great pleasure to welcome you today during our last webinar we've been working together initiative. Uh, the main theme is uh, inclusive employer branding. We will start with walk the talk, how to build an image of truly inclusive employer. Our presenter Faith Ho from Fleischmann Hillard UK, our main partner. The next presentation will be diversity and inclusion A success. So I have a bad connection today. How to make sure your employer branding strategy point is not just a buzzword. Not West Poland by Maciej Jancevic. And uh, last but not least, inclusive employer branding means inviting diverse talent and enabling it for equal opportunities by Monika Jankowska Rangloff from State Street. We wouldn't be here if not our partners. Let me thank you. Our Platinum Partner, Standard Charter, Expertise Partner, NatWest Group, and Thematic Block Partner, Fleischmann Hiller. Thank you very much for your support during the whole year while we build this program and the agenda of working together. Together, working together, together sounds nice. Uh, can we have a next slide, please, Joanna? And our First presenter, Faith Howe, Managing Director, Talent and Transformation from Flashman Hillard. Faith, the stream is yours. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Faith. Uh, as you know, I'm currently MD of Talent and Transformation at Flashman Hillard, so working with clients to support them through employee engagement, change management um, and employer branding work. Um, but my own background um, started in executive recruitment um, and I have held internal roles across HR and talent development. Um, so know about building um, d &I's inclusion strategies on the inside as well as um, communicating those on the outside. Um, if we can move into um, onto the next slide and um, I'm going to spend a bit of time to you today with you today sharing um, my thoughts on um, what it takes to build an inclusive employer brand and, and the building blocks um, to do so. So we'll step right in on the next slide um, with an observation um, from me, which is that um, employer branding is certainly coming up the corporate agenda. Um, and I, I'll um, ask you all your thoughts on this in a moment in on Mentimeter, but um, certainly employer branding was once um, a bit of an afterthought, to be honest. Um, it was passed around between marketing, HR, recruitment teams. It was a bit of a nice to have. Um, and, um, you know, often didn't get quite the priority or budget, certainly, that um, broader corporate branding and company and product branding certainly did. Um, but now what we're seeing is that effective employer branding has become absolutely critical um, to business success. Um, so moving on to the next slide, um, I would love to ask your thoughts on this and um, would love you to jump onto Mentimeter using the QR code on the screen and your mobile phones to answer the question, has building a strong employer brand for your organization become a higher priority for your leadership over the last year to 18 months? And by your leadership, I mean your board or your executive teams, your broader leadership teams outside of um, the HR recruitment space, but is employer branding a priority for your business? 100%. <laughs> that's um that's certainly reflecting what we're seeing. It's um you know we know that um oh okay so we've got 50%. There we go. No employer branding is a priority just for our recruitment and marketing. 25%. Let's see where this um where you all net out. 40%. Any more answers coming in? 33%. Always a priority. Okay, any more answers? 
OK, so we've got a picture. Just over half of you will say that no employer branding remains a priority purely for recruitment and marketing teams. 14% um, of you saying that employer branding has always been a, um, a, a priority for your leadership team, which is fantastic. Um, and then the rest of you feeling that employer branding has certainly risen up the leadership agenda um, in recent times. Um, so why is this? And if it is becoming more important, why is it becoming more important? Well, the first um, element is, of course, the U the the um, always ROI, which is standing out in the war for talent. Um, you know, an effective employer brand is absolutely key to differentiating yourself and recruiting great people. And that has always been the case and always a key reason to invest in your employer brand. But if we move on to the next slide, um, we're also seeing um, in more recent times that your employer brand is becoming a really critical factor in your overall brand and positioning. And in fact, it is increasingly the expectations. Oh, I've lost uh, lost my presentation. It's increasingly the expectations of customers and consumers um, within um, when they're making purchasing decisions. Um, as to how um, an employer is treating employees um, and uh, and really um, and, and really considered as part of social impact. So in some um, research that we undertook and um, Fleischmann Hillard undertook during the course of the pandemic, we learned that 32 percent of customers and consumers intended to buy um, particularly from companies that took care of their employees during the crisis. And 76% of customers say that companies must provide work environments that are more diverse, inclusive and equal. So we're seeing that employer brands are now not only important for um, talking to prospective talent, but they are also um, how you stand up and what you stand for as an employer and your duty of care to your employees is an important factor in customer decision and cons consumer decision making in today's landscape. And then the final um, reason why uh, employer branding has risen up the corporate agenda on my next slide please um, is the fact that your employer brand can be a really key lever in um, progressing helping to progress your um, strategy towards your diversity and inclusion goals so by um, thinking about uh, you know obviously within the context of diversity and inclusion um, making sure that you're diversifying the recruitment pipeline of talent, so diversifying the talent that you're bringing in through your recruitment pipeline to support the overall diversity in your business overall um, can be really helped by having um, an effective employer brand that speaks about your commitments to diversity and inclusion as an organisation, but also really reaches out and resonates with diverse talent audiences, positioning you as an employer of choice for diverse talent audiences. So not just about um, filling the recruitment pipeline anymore, but about customer decision making and also about supporting your diversity and inclusion goals. If we could move on to the next slide, um, please. And um, having and I'd love to ask you a question um, to that effect, which is about um, the extent to which uh, you as employers and, and your organizations are communicating your DNI strategy and journey as part of your employer brand and recruitment marketing communications. So is your DNI story part of your employer brand story and are you proactively communicating this? See where the answers come in. It's really interesting. So we're sitting at about 50 50 at the moment. So 50 percent of you are really actively communicating about DNI and your DNI journey as part of building your employer brand. Oh, that's dropping down a bit. And um, while others of you are saying that actually diversity and inclusion is something that you communicate about internally, um, but not as part of your um, employer branding communications. And that's moving up and down a little bit. But um, I would say on this point that increasingly um, prospective talent are looking to employers to show their commitment to diversity and inclusion. This doesn't mean to say that you need to be the finished finished article. No employer is. We all know that building uh, that diversity and inclusion is a journey that's never ending and the work is never done. 
but being clear about your commitment and your intent um, and your authenticity when it comes to um, diversity and inclusion is a really key um, point and differentiator for prospective talent to hear about when they're making decisions about the employer that they will choose. If we can move on to the next slide, um, please, and um, just to, to reinforce this, because we are in an age now where an effective, an effective employer brand must be an inclusive employer brand. This is what talent is looking for. Um, people want to join inclusive organisations where they can learn and experience and work with div diverse, um, diverse teams and diverse talent. And so inclusivity is an absolutely key um, component of a clear employer value proposition. So let's move on and think about how we how we get there. And um, I'd like to share with you some thinking um, that we have around the authenticity gap, which is um, about making sure that when we are um, communicating about our employer brand, we're doing so with absolute authenticity. And this means that there is complete alignment between our brand, our employer brand, so what we are saying about ourselves as an employer and an organisation, and what others would say about us based on their shared perceptions and experiences of us. So what we say as an, as, as an employer um, brand and what we say about ourselves as an employer must be reflected in our reputation as an employer. And our reputation as an employer will be built by our employees and our prospective employees and our past employees who have experience of, um, of our culture and of, of working with us on the ground. And so making sure that um, we know where we can confidently walk the walk and have absolute credibility in what we're saying about what we stand for and how diversity and inclusion lives and breathes through our organisations is really key to building that authentic employer brand. If we could move on um, to the next slide, please. Um, and just to reflect on this point, I mean, we know that when it comes to employer branding, perhaps more than any branding, there's absolutely nowhere to hide. If we talk about being an inclusive workplace, but that is not employees experience on the ground, we have an authenticity gap and we know that. Um, there's really nowhere to hide that's quickly revealed when it comes to employer branding. Of course, Glassdoor is typically a place where people who are disgruntled or have um, issues to bear will go and um, make comments. Of course, that is the case and tends to be the minority. But we are seeing time and time again, major whistleblowing um, on corporate cultures which are divisive, that aren't inclusive and where employees come together to speak out about their experience of their employers. And so authenticity and really walking the walk internally before you talk, talk externally is absolutely key. Moving on to the next slide, um, please. Um, and this is um, really, um, so now we know that how important building an inclusive employer brand is, but um, it's not easy to achieve. I'm going to take you through um, eight steps to, to getting there. So the first step, if we could move on to the next slide, is, um, as we've talked about, walking the walk. So to do this, we need to ensure um, that your employer value proposition has inclusion at its absolute core. This means that diversity and inclusion isn't a strategy or an initiative that sits separately from talent and from employees and from culture, but it should form every single aspect of the employee experience. Um, this means that to do this, we need to set clear goals for DNI that are owned at the top. We use data to understand our diverse audiences. We develop strategies to meet those audience expectations and to drive towards our DNI goals. We measure track and um, track progress and report that regularly. And we're relentless about embedding diversity and inclusion throughout the employee experience. Step two on the next slide um, is about not marking your own homework. Um, so once you have your diversity and inclusion strategies in place, it's really worth um, working with partners um, for recognised DNI accreditations or professional standards to assess your work, to get the validation, but also the input and guidance um, to getting your diversity and inclusion strategies right. 
but also using your employees to tell you what that real lived experience is on the ground. It's one thing to have all the strategies in place, but if your employees are not experiencing inclusion on the ground, then there's work to do. So by getting your employee input to validate the work that you're doing, um, but also getting the recognised accreditations or professional standards, um, to validate your DNI um, strategies, that builds credibility and authenticity when you talk about diversity and inclusion as part of your employer brand on the outside. And remember that DEI is always a work in progress. So um, you're again, you're not expected to be the finished article um, uh, uh, right from the outset, but it's about communicating progress towards your goals and continued commitment towards meeting your goals. Step three um, on the next slide is about communicating your employer brand and developing um, really compelling creative that's going to cut through the noise. So once you know what your employer brand stands for and um, you are clear that you're taking all the right steps to build your employer brand internally and walk the walk, when you think about how do you communicate it externally, um, we really need to be quite bold and creative in terms of how we cut through the noise. It's a hugely competitive um, employer brand market out there. Every big employer is trying to catch the attention of diverse top talent um, uh, to, to, to support their recruitment efforts. And so a bold creative that really catches attention and um, interrupts um, the conversation is what you need to really stand out. To do this, um, it takes having really de having data led insight into your audiences, a really strong unifying sentiment and a compelling reason for prospective and current talent to care that can manifest into a creative idea that you can take to market to really bring your employer brand to life. Step four on the next slide. Is about starting on the inside. This means that um, we need to really test our employer brand promise internally before launching externally. There's one thing about walking the walk and doing everything that we can to embed diversity and inclusion throughout our company, um, throughout our company culture. But when we think about the messages that we want to communicate externally, we should be testing these on our employees internally. Our employees can be always our harshest critics, but they're the best place to judge. And we need to make sure that what we're portraying on the outside, our employees recognize to be true and that they would stand by what we say as organizations. So message testing and employer brand creative testing with your employees is a key step before you take it outside. Step four, sorry, step five on the next slide. Um, is to reach your audiences where they are. And this is about um, not expecting diverse talent audiences to come and find you, but actually make, being really proactive in terms of the channels you use, the partnerships that you use, um, and the ways in which you show up, the conversations that you join in order to reach out and proactively speak to diverse talent deliberately and with purpose. To do this, you need to use data to understand where your diverse talent audiences are, the conversations that they're part of, the channels that they use, the news outlets that, that, that resonate with them, the um, charities that they support, whatever it might be, um, and use that data to understand how to reach them and show up there where they are, because that proactivity will really help you to connect with a much broader talent audience than the classic um, channels that you would typically use where you will get your um, where you will get your typical and unusual followers. So before we move on to um, the final steps, I'd just love to stop here and um, ask another question on Mentimeter, which is um, around um, the extent to which uh, members of the audience are already proactively using different new channels and partnerships to attract more diverse talent um, to the pipeline through your employer brand communications. That's great to see. And, and there is a balance here, I think, between building 
general awareness of our employer brand um, across um, across talent and being very proactive in terms of diversifying channels and diversifying the ways in which we reach out to talent to diversify our pipeline. But by thinking about how to reach diverse talent in in um, through broader channels, um, this is one of the ways in which we can really use employer branding effectively to drive that um, diversity in terms of recruitment and the talent pipeline. Great, so if we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, and step six, which is about using inclusive communication always. Um, so I know we're going to speak a bit about more about inclusive language later, but this is so important in employer branding communications, making sure that the language, the imagery, the events, the partnerships that you use to communicate your employer brand through are as inclusive as the organisation um, that you are. I was on a panel um, a little while ago, um, a, a few weeks ago, talking about um, attracting talent into our own industry, the PR marketing and communications industry. And one of the panellists who had done a marketing and communications degree um, told us that um, he was actually dissuaded from entering our industry um, because he was a Muslim and didn't drink. And the um, the way in which that we run recruitment um, and showcased um, graduate employment in our industry was typically always centered around drinks events. And these drinks events didn't feel inclusive at all to this individual who um, saw our culture as being um, a culture that wouldn't resonate um, with him, his background, his culture and his family. Um, so it was um, it, it was a, a really um, sort of obvious but interesting um, and important insight about the nature of the events that our industry um, typically uses to attract graduate talent um, was exclu felt exclusive um, and not truly welcoming to the full diversity of talent that we were looking to speak to. So a, an interesting learning. Um, and, and an example of where inclusive communication is so important. Moving on to um, slide seven. And um, this is about employee advocacy and how powerful employee advocates are in building an inclusive employer brand. Um, so obviously this is, uh, you know, making, making it easy for your employees to want to advocate for you because they believe in what you're saying is key. And we've talked about walking the walk and we've talked about testing um, your messaging with employees. But the other thing to consider when you think about employee advocacy is how easy you make it for them to communicate on your behalf. Um, employees are often very willing to advocate um, and be employer brand um, ambassadors. Um, but in reality, they, they don't always know how and it's not always particularly easy. They don't know the right messaging to be putting up on social media. They don't always have the content to share at their fingertips. So not just um, making the ask of employees, but really making it easy for them to communicate on social channels, but also to represent you at events in industry forums um, by putting content in their hands or creating those opportunities for them to be employer brand ambassadors for you. And then, of course, using your employee storytelling to really bring to life um, the opportunities within your organisation. So real life examples of inspiring career journeys and the experiences that your diverse talent have across your organisation will help you um, to communicate and connect with diverse talent audiences that you want to recruit. And then finally. <laughs> do we have a question or I can um, take a question at the end? Um, finally, step eight is about um, sharing your DNI journey. Um, so we've talked about um, inclusive communication as part of your employer brand campaign, but I think that um, making recognizing that you're that that you're on a diversity and inclusion journey that is never done but sharing um, the progress that you're making on that journey, both internally and externally, helps to demonstrate your commitment, um, but also um, helps to, to demonstrate the progress that you're making. And where there are barriers, being open about what those barriers are and what they're doing, what you're doing as, a, as an employer to overcome them, 
will really help um, to gain the support and traction that you need employ uh, internally, particularly with your own employees. So transparency about your journey with authenticity really goes a long way um, when it comes to building your inclusive employer brand. And having been through all that and to say that the work is never done, um, we then, of course, start again because um, this is a continual and continuous loop of um, building diversity and inclusion throughout your organisation, communicating it externally, understanding your talent and audience and prospective talent expectations as they evolve, evolving your strategy to meet those expectations, communicating that strategy and driving towards um, being a truly inclusive employer brand. So they are the steps that I will leave you with. I'm really happy to um, answer questions, of course, but I know that we have other panellists who are going to bring to life um, some specific examples of how this is working um, within their own organisation. So happy to take questions um, or hand, hand back to the panel here. Faith, thank, thank you very much for this introduction. Uh, I strongly encourage all of you to ask questions in the chat. Of course, I truly hope that at the end of the webinar, we will have some time uh, for the discussion and Q&A session. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's move to another slide. Uh, I have a great pleasure to uh, announce Anna Yarczewska, Head of HR Standard Chartered, uh, who will present diversity and inclusion as a key pillar of employer branding. Uh, Anna, the stream is yours. Thank you very much. Welcome all. Um, I have a pleasure to, um, to meet with you today to talk a bit about our example and how we have went about uh, ensuring that diversity and inclusion is uh, a strong pillar of everything we do and of course about our story. If I can ask for the next slide, because we will be starting with the questions before we do so. Uh, if you could please, through the, um, through the application, tell us how important is organization diversity and inclusion performance and record when you are considering a new employer. So far, 100% on very important, but let's, uh, let's wait a second as a learning from a previous one. Still, we do have diverse answers, but for almost 50% of us, it is a very important aspect. If we can move to a next question. What sources of information are you most likely using when assessing the prevalence and performance of diversity and inclusion in the organization? So what do you consider? Where do you look for information? And it's a very, very small slide, so I have to do this. OK, so also many areas, but the walking the talk and, and the actual insights from the organization, which which already today has been discussed as a, as a key area to make sure that you actually do what you're saying that you're doing. It is, it is a key uh, going forward. Thank you for this. And let's uh, move on to, to our examples, if I can have the next one. So what we will be uh, speaking to you today is our vision and our understanding of diversity and how we see inclusion um, as a part of our employee value proposition. What does it mean that it's a part of our DNA? And also how we share our story, what means and actions and um, uh, communication channels we have chosen and what, which are working for us best to sharing, us, sharing that with the market, with the audience, with the talent. If we can go forward. So Standard Chartered is one of the world's biggest bank. Uh, we do operate on 59 markets, employ 85,000 people from over 130 countries. 
and our customer base reaches over 150 markets. So as, as you see, diversity is a fact for us. It is a part of our DNA. And the same in Poland. In Poland, we have reached 900 employees in our teams. 20% um, of us are of different nationality. And together we speak almost 50 languages here in the Poland, um, our Poland organization. But when we look at, uh, at the diversity and when we define diversity within our organization, we look way beyond that. It is not only the representation of specific groups within the team that we should be focusing on. To build an inclusive culture, you have to definitely look beyond that. In our definition, diversity is a broad set of attributes, experiences, and features that make every one of us unique. And of course, nationality, gender, uh, ethnic background, um, and other attributes are the examples, but only examples of, of that. When we're talking about inclusive workspace, it is a workspace and the organization where everyone can feel safe, accepted, respected, and valued for who they are and what they contribute to the overall success. It is also worth emphasizing the broad customer base because your customers are diverse and your employer brand is your brand. And of course, sometimes organizations uh, look mostly internally with their diversity actions, but it's, it's very important to also recognize the outside world and the impact of it to your organization. From our experience, uh, it, it has been crucial to look really multidimensional. We do consider our multiple competencies and skills that our very various teams are representing as a part of our diversity. And also the aspect of the preference we have um, a very diverse um, team that has a lot of preferences in terms of how they want to work, where they want to work, and what's the best way for them to succeed. And this is everything that we are taking consider under consideration. We're creating our inclusive culture. And, uh, and also understand that it changes. It changes throughout uh, employees' time with us and it changes uh, over their stages of life, and that is also what we are prepared for. If we can move forward and tell you a bit more about how our employee value proposition looks like. And it is understanding that our differences are actually the strength of the organization. In my perspective, diversity gives perspective itself. It, um, it brings inclusion, and that all supports innovation. And this is why, through the innovation, we are able to win on the market. We are very committed to creating the environment when everyone can be at their best. So you do see, um, of course, the unique culture of diversity and inclusion as a key part, as a first part of our employee value proposition. But as we have mentioned um, in our invitation to this event, it is not something, it's no longer something that will be able to differentiate your brand among others. This is absolutely a key, a base that um, needs to be a part of your story and your culture to really have a successful brand. Without, without inclusive culture and being an inclusive employer, um, you wouldn't be able to succeed on a market, even if there is a wonderful story, story on other elements. And uh, what already also Faith mentioned today, to be an employer, uh, inclusive employer, and be perceived as inclusive employer, you simply need to, to provide that culture and that opportunities to your wider uh, teams on the ground. It is, um, that you're, it is the main source of information for your audience, and this is your biggest ambassadors group that needs to be able to share that with, um, with the outside world. What does it mean that diversity and inclusion is a part of an organization's DNA and how you create that inclusiveness in everything you, you, uh, we do? If I can have another slide. 
So in our example, it's of course next to diversity and inclusion being one of our strategic pillar, pillars and having a teams, um, resources, focus, discussions around the theme is actually a lens that we apply to every single aspect of our workspace, starting from working conditions. And in those forums and in many other forums, we have shared our examples of building flexible and hybrid working models where our employees can choose the place of work and the time that is best for them uh, to, to complete their tasks. In terms of working space, a very unique working space that is, um, first of all, um, very open to all kinds of um, diversity and needs of our employees in terms of mobility and using the space, but also it is adjusted to a different styles of working from cooperation to quiet spaces, to being able to meet with the team, to being able uh, to contribute um, uh, individually. It is how we have designed our pay and benefits with fair pay charter and putting diversity and inclusion checks uh, in, in everything we do in terms of remuneration, but also adjusting our benefit package and making it so choiceful for everyone to actually be able to select whatever fits their needs at this moment and give the ability to change it over time. This is how we plan our, our um, talent management initiative. This is how we grow, how we develop our employees and within all the opportunities that we do um, here um, in the hubs and in the organization globally. Moving forward. And with that, of course, it is um, diversity and inclusion that it's a main theme of the communication and uh, marketing and our CSR actions. While selecting partnership and activities, we get involved in sponsorships or partnerships um, to the organizations that would support um, that alignment. Our partnership with ABSL within working together is, of course, the example of doing so. And, and we're very happy to be meeting with you on a regular basis um, to, share, to share experiences and be a part of discussion. The other examples could be a Poland business run when we joined up with our employees to support organization um, focusing on motor disabilities and making sure uh, that there is a realizing a full potential of, um, of everyone uh, in, that, uh, in that area. And we're very proud to actually helped our Paralympics uh, to achieve a better results with additional equipment and support. We are very active in all kinds of women in tech, summits, um, days, hackathons to help us to contribute to create a more uh, gender balanced technology sector. We sponsor digitalization of Poland's biggest and oldest archive of LGBTQ materials um, and preserve precious historical and cultural resources and also show our focus on digital. Uh, we support LGBTQ um, Diamond Awards and help us cre create a lot of role models. And of course, female leadership project to um, partner with British Chamber of Commerce to allow us to support our female leaders together and discuss the C-suite executive and how we can create a more inclusive and gender balance space in that area. And uh, with the next slide, I very much uh, love the expression of not to mark uh, our own homework. And uh, we are absolutely not doing so. And the part of certifications and audits and um, recognition processes it is a part of our story. So it's not only through uh, what we say, uh, but also what others do say about us and how we meet the standards and market standards. Uh, we're making sure that uh, we're doing the, the right thing in terms of processes. A few via, for example, great place to work certification that as Poland we have achieved this year. And um, for us, that's, that's very humbling experience and of course, great recognition, especially that we've been on the market um, for three and a half years right now and develop within pandemic. So our opportunities to really 
be present and and be together were limited and even even um, though that was our reality uh, the the success and the recognition is there we are in process of getting company without barriers certification that it's focusing on uh, differently abled employees and our readiness to accommodate various needs um, from a technical perspective, space perspective, but also approach perspective um, and our capabilities and leadership capabilities in that area perspective as well. Um, and this uh, certifications and verification processes are helping to um, helping us to really assess where, where we are and what else can we do, how else can we develop and what would be our next step of focus because again it, it's never done and it's always uh, it's it's always a work in progress. Of course diversity and inclusion uh, areas are a very important part of every internal survey that we are doing. We do have uh, the very standard employee engagement surveys, but also post surveys on many topics, and that the area that it's always been covered and always being considered uh, when hearing feedback from our employees. And going forward, we have one more question. As an employee, would you leave a company if um, discovered that it's actually not actively supporting? And um, and it's not very diversity, and it's not very inclusive workspace. No. Yes. Let's wait. So we're going towards yes, with sixty percent now, and yes, we are on on the talent market, we all know, uh, all, all know that the war for talent is there, but also there is a strong need and strong focus from our companies and our uh, team's perspective to ensure that, the, that we are purpose-driven business, that we are the business who's doing the right thing and who cre which creates the opportunities for all. That's why we do see uh, from our surveys that we, we complete also externally, that it's definitely our future talent preference to have the employer who's inclusive, who's uh, sharing their values, who's sharing and uh, adjusting to their needs, but also who's creating the opportunities for everyone to succeed. And it's very flexible. Thank you for this. And also conscious of time, happy to take all the questions if there is anything emerging now. And if not, at the very end, we'll have some time to do that. Anna, thank you. Uh, we do have one comment and one question uh, in the chat, but I would suggest that uh, we should all engage. Uh, the question from Pavel was how we truly define the diversity. I think that you somehow answered this question in your presentation, but uh, what I propose, let's uh, uh, answer all our speakers this question at the end of the uh, webinar. In the meantime, all participants in the chat, please uh, uh, define what diversity means for you. Uh, Anna, thank you again. Um, we will move now to another presentation, another case study from NatWest. And uh, Maciej, uh, the stream is yours. How to make sure your employer branding strategy point is not just a buzzword. Right. Thank you. So welcome, everyone. Um, I'm really glad to be here and uh, you know, to be able to talk to you because I want to share with you a couple of uh, examples and I want to share with you my thoughts as well. But mostly I want to share with you how uh, we are making sure that um, this strategy point, because this is one of the strategy points for us uh, in our employee branding, um, that this is not just a buzzword. And I've got a couple of examples um, or a couple of ideas how to do it. The next slide, please. Right. So first is work with your strategy. Right, so what does this mean? I mean, first for many of you um, and probably for uh, everyone uh, within your organization, um, you know, strategy usually they are um, quite simple, uh, but usually quite complex. 
they are quite intuitive, but not everyone understands that. So think about your strategy. Think what it really means to you. What do you what do you really want to change? And from my perspective, actually, um, diversity and inclusion and working with uh, diversity and inclusion within your company is actually something which you need to do. It's not something which it's, you know, it's easy to communicate because once you just communicate that, it doesn't mean anything to, um, you know, to, to your colleagues. So work with your strategy. Think about that, what it means, what can you do, what can you improve, what can you change, and what people really expect. So next slide, please. So some time ago, we set up our strategy and we said that we want to be a number one workplace for diversity and inclusion within a couple of years. And we sit down and we started to think, so what it really means to us, what it really means to our employees. And we find out that we really don't know, right? So this is a strategy which we set up and we really don't know what it means. So we decided that we should talk to our colleagues so we we decided that this is the best way to uh, to find out what it really means um and ask them next slide please so my recommendation and actually this everything what i'm talking about today um it's nothing you know this is not the only way this is not probably the best way but this is the way how it really works. So if you think from, from that perspective, what do you want to achieve and what do you want to do, that will help you to deliver and it will, you know, it will be promoted by your friends, your colleagues from the organization. And you won't, won't need to think about how to sell it because that's going to be really authentic. So you've learned today that the, the authentic of, of this is, is a key. And I agree with it and how to make sure that this is really authentic. So we decided that we will talk to our colleagues. We will ask them what it really means to them. What is, you know, what are the aspects which are very important to them? Because otherwise we would probably come up with the ideas which doesn't, you know, doesn't fit to, to, to the organization because people will think something different. Yeah, so yeah, we decided to ask them and we set up a group of people. Next slide, please. So we set up a different group of people. We set up a strategy that we will have employee-led networks within our organization. And um, each employee network is actually working in the diff with the different topics. Um, we decided that this is the best way to get the information from employees to listen, basically, not just telling them what to do, but we allow them to come up with ideas where we ask them actually to, you know, take this opportunity, but also to take this responsibility for, um, you know, for the things we as an organization we're going to do. So, yeah, we ask them basically what you want to do, what what's the most important aspects for you. So those groups, which you can see right here, are the groups of employees who really want to change something or really want to you know, inform or really are keen or focus on, on those topics. So it's not about that, what we're going to tell them. This is more about what they've got to tell to us. Us, I mean, like management team, we are really listening to them because to me, communication is actually more about listening rather than talking. So it's something different what I do right now, right? But I, I hope you're going to agree with me that once you've got people who are really interested in the topic you are working on right now, then you're going to have the most uh, valuable information. You're going to have um, you know, really those big rocks which you need to change, either improve or just simply communicate. So it's, to me, diversity is not 
about you know what I think it's about what people thinks so that's why I would you know encourage to to ask your colleagues to ask your staff what they think you know where is a gap which you can easily uh, change or you can easily improve so you, you might use some surveys you might ask them to come up or meet with you on zoom or skype or uh, whatever tool you're going to use but actually talk to the people talk to your colleagues and try to understand um you know what they're struggling with don't tell them that you are really you know diverse and you know this is a great place to work because we are diverse ask them what they really think and you know try to come up with ideas we can really make with what will really make the difference for them actually so once you will engage with your colleagues once you will have inside knowledge what is really important next slide please um, then engage your management team it's a key to to you know to bring a change actually so you need to make sure that they're going to be engaged with the activities which you are delivering um, you need to make sure that they know what people think they know what people you know are missing something or what you will change you also need them to you know to secure some budget for the activities which you are planning to deliver um you know if you want to make a change most likely you're going to need a budget for for this so next slide please so how we uh, engage management um within the activities which uh, our colleagues are keen to deliver actually we ask management team members to be a sponsor of each employee-led networks and by this our colleagues from the uh, employee-led networks they've got chance to present and to engage each one of those uh, management team members to in their activities they've got more time to convince them why it's really important because sometimes it's only about time and it's only about you know listening so once you've got sponsors for each um employee-led network you're basically giving a time a space and a moment um when they can you know say what is really important for them and you know, each uh, management team member may bring this topic to the management um, meeting and we can discuss that and you know make sure that the voice is heard and that we will secure the budget for those activities which uh, our colleagues are planning so to me diversity it's more about what people think not what you think um because you know this we all have different opinion we all have different mindset we all got different experience um but you know everything together is something which really creates an inclusive company and when you believe that uh, you know everyone have um a voice everyone can speak up and they can make sure that um things which are really important to them are uh, on high level of agenda of management team so on this stage is also because we are a corporation as most of your companies um usually goals um works really good for us so setting up a goal for each um area um sometimes helps you to deliver the change sometimes helps you to secure the budget for that so i would encourage you as well on this stage to think how and what kind of goals you may set up to make sure that um, the workplace which you are creating because you are creating the workplace actually for uh, for your colleagues and for yourself as well so setting up those goals um make you know brings you um brings your strategy to to life that's 
that's how we've done it and this uh, this is how it works uh, in our organization so i'm not showing you uh, pictures of my colleagues from uh, from uh, our management team um just because i want to make sure that you're going to be familiar with them but i just want to show you that you know behind those um logotypes which we have here uh, we've got real people and real really important aspects and really um you know something which works for uh, for, for the group and i <clears throat> i wanted to be really honest with you uh when i prepare for this presentation and i thought that sharing with you um some failures um will help you to to build really inclusive uh, organization because this is what is important to, to us um, and one of the uh, failures we had on the beginning is recruiting people actually to those employee-led networks and i would encourage everyone actually to look for those people not recruiting them um, because you need to have a strong leadership within those employee-led networks because otherwise topics will um you know people will forget about uh, how important it is so try to find those who are really engaged and it's not always easy to find them but they will be crucial for you to to deliver uh, that what you've planned so next slide please so once you've engaged your colleagues within your organization and they will tell you what is important, what you need to change or what you need to do, um, you've also managed to engage your management team and usually you need to have some pretty good slides with pretty good numbers and explain them why this is important and try to um, use the uh, corporate strategy actually or corporate goals to convince them and it really works. Um, find your partners, engage with the, with the partners, because they're gonna help you um, with answering questions which you will come up um, during your journey, because this is a journey actually. Next slide, please. So here you will find our partners, those are the partners which uh, work for us and works for our colleagues. Um, we are working with them since a couple of uh, years, probably right now. You may find a different one, so it's not about promoting those. But I'm trying to convince you that once you're going to find the partners who are really actually close to the topic, who are really close to the uh, society which you, uh, you are working with, um, you're going to find out that probably they've got some solutions so you don't have to reinvent the wheel but they will tell you they will help you to set up um, some activities uh, which will help you to deliver your strategy so work with them work really closely um, and measure yourself as well against um, goals which you are setting up because once you've engaged your management team they will set up some goals. They will help you to build um, some plan or some strategy for each element. And um, finding your partners to delivering will make your life much easier, but you're gonna gain um, you know, visibility of being a trust partner uh, once you will talk to the, uh, to, to partners which are um, which are experts on the market, actually. So I encourage you to whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to plan within your uh, company, uh, to find the right partners is is a key as well to your success. And I'm <laughs> next slide, please. So once you've got uh, engagement. Uh, from your colleagues, once you've got an engagement, once you've built the engagement actually within the management team and everyone, uh, everyone are on the same page and everyone are keen to uh, make sure that your company is actually a really diverse company, start to deliver. Uh, if you decide to communicate just 
who you are um, or why you were really diverse, most likely it won't change anything within your colleagues' mind. So start to deliver the actions which you've planned in the beginning, which you've planned to deliver with your colleagues, whatever, if it's a, an employee-led network or some group of, uh, or some project team, um, start to deliver it. Next slide, please. I'll show you if you can show me your next slide. Right, so we are, um, we, we decided to, to, to organize LGBT Diamond Scala Awards a couple of years back. Now we've got really strong partners um, and I'm happy to, to, to see that uh, some of those partners we've got here as well uh, on this call today. Um, so that was actually the idea, um, how we can bring the difference, how we, you know, how we can try to make sure that our colleagues will safe, uh, will feel safe and secure within the organization. We started to, to work with the, with the organization, with NGOs. Um, we found out what is really missing. Um, so the NGOs didn't, dis didn't have connections with uh, with the business proper connection the business didn't uh, invite NGOs to to such a um, events or such a um, activities and we decided that we would like to connect them so th this is the um, the element which we decided to bring uh, and it really works um, and our colleagues are also very engaged and we don't need to sell this activity actually outside the organization because our colleagues are talking about that because uh, we really make a difference here. We are also a partner of um, Women in Tech uh, Summit, which is uh, one of the biggest uh, FM that kind uh, in Europe. Um, so our colleagues actually are mentoring right there. Um, to, to our colleagues from uh, technology, that, that was actually an eye-opener. So, um, so we, we helped them actually to build their agenda um, as well uh, right here. So once you've got everyone engaged, once you've got everyone on board, start to deliver. And um, once you deliver, next slide, please. Communicate. I know that most likely you are receiving a lot of communication uh, within your organization. Probably not everything is uh, really uh, important to you uh, in this moment of time. But don't forget about communicating uh, what you've done, what you've achieved, because this is on one side, on one hand, this is actually very important to the people who are really engaged in those activities. This is also important uh, to use inclusive language, and uh, we've heard about that as well today. So once you use the, once you will communicate what you've changed or what you've delivered, you will need to use inclusive language, and that will, and you will bring this inclusive language um, to your colleagues, to your organization, and probably you will make a difference um, just by doing that. So communicate uh, with everyone, um, inform um, about activities you've performed or you've delivered together with your colleagues. And don't forget about, next slide please, using they words actually. So don't think about a really um, corporate title or don't think about uh, very, um, corporate message, um, try to use their words, try to show them. Um, they will promote that, they will be um, happy that uh, they've got a space and they will hear that the thing would, would they are actually delivering or the, the activities they are performing is really important to, to others and you will get colleagues from, and you will get the engagement from other colleagues and most likely next year, you're gonna have a bigger team um, within your uh, employee-led networks or project teams where more people would like to engage. 
So what I'm trying to say to you today is actually, usually when we think about the strategy, um, and once we've got our strategy, if it's a, a marketing strategy, um, sales strategy, whatever, uh, usually right after the strategy, we come with a plan. Um, when you think about diversity and inclusion as, um, as an aspect of or element of your employer branding strategy, I would encourage you to actually first engage with your colleagues to ask them what it means and they will come up with a plan for you. Um, so instead of reinventing the wheel, you will you will get the activities and you will get a plan from your colleagues. And don't forget about engaging management team because they need to hear about that. They need to be close to that. And don't forget about partners. So basically that's all what I wanted to say to you today. Um, like I said in the beginning, this is uh, not the only way. Most likely it's not the best way. But definitely uh, we can say that this way uh, of working with diversity and inclusion, it really works. Thanks. Mate, thank you very much for sharing a NatWest perspective. And uh, as ABSL, we are really looking forward for our further cooperation with uh, LGBTQ uh, diamonds. Uh, dear participants, stay tuned for more information and update on uh, next edition 2022 cooperation NatWest and ABSL. Yeah. And, uh, Monica, uh, inclusive employer branding means inviting diverse talent and enabling it for equal opportunities. A state Street perspective on inclusive employer branding. The stream is yours. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm not going to int introduce myself more, except from the fact that I'm working with uh, various EMEA locations. So uh, in our focus, not only Poland plays a um, let's say uh, the key role, uh, but is equally important as any other location, though our greatest uh, representation population is present in Poland. So absolutely some of the examples will be very Polish or Poland related. Uh, if we can uh, start please with my slides, I will just mention that, um, you know, uh, shaping the employer brand around diversity and inclusion, in my opinion, is a business critical journey and the right thing to do for um, you know our people and community whatever it is so so absolutely i don't know whether you are sharing the slides or it's only me hanging <laughs> okay thank you uh, we never know how teams behave so i just wanted to to, to make sure so if we can f uh, start with slide number three please um i would be grateful because i just wanted to show you that except from inclusion and diversity thank you we go uh, one step further and especially this year we started to introduce equity so this is our company-wide effort um, that we want to ensure that every one of our employees feels engaged and valued by recognizing um, the um, unique talents and, and experiences. So this is the most important for us. And we continue to be a global community where every employee feels valued, inspired, and empowered to leverage their diverse experiences and identities which provides um, innovative, authentic and enhanced um, service to our clients, community and one another. So I just wanted to show you that actually um, we want to um, make sure that our employees understand what diversity is, right? And most of us know, I know there is such a question on the chat, uh, what the diversity is and how we interpret it. So I hope we will end up with a definition. Nevertheless, uh, an organization can be diverse without being inclusive. That's, um, that's obvious, right? Because inclusion is not a natural consequence of a diverse team or organization. Um, people often say diversity is an invitation to a party, whereas inclusion is um, being asked to dance. It's a common phrase. I, I'm sure many of you know that. 
However, being asked to do something doesn't really mean uh, the full inclusion, because inclusion, in our opinion, is about value. Having a diverse workplace means uh, differences exist, and inclusion takes it forward to ask how everyone from team members to end users can feel valued. People uh, want to feel valued, whether in teams, organizations, or when interacting with a product or a service, whatever it is. And inclusion relates to the quality of, the, of that human experience. So for example, a diverse workplace um, acknowledges acknowledges uh, there might be people who might have slightly different needs. For example, um, they need to work in a peaceful workplace or in a corner, not in a big open space uh, because they are neurodiverse. So, for example, by designing such a space or dedicating a desk for such a person, we show people that they are actually valued, that we do not um, ignore the needs and we encourage them to bring more of themselves to the workplace. It's very important for us in, in, in at State Street. So to sum it up, um, inclusion is not a natural consequence of a diverse team or organization in our opinion, and we need to design for it. We need to implement changes and to do so, uh, we must work with the people uh, we are designing for. So, as my colleague mentioned, we need to involve people, we need to hear their voice to understand what their needs are. Um, nothing about us without us. That's a great saying and I think it's very applicable for people with, with different uh, needs because they are individual needs. So, from our team members uh, to our end users, so these are and all the stakeholders, because we need to implement uh, the needs in policies, processes, um, physical spaces and uh, products, um, what, whatever we deliver, whatever industry it is. And I just wanted to say one more thing about equity, because uh, when we defined equity uh, and equality, very, very often these two terms are uh, misused, uh, actually, they lead to different results uh, because when we treat everyone equally means we treat everyone the same. But when we treat everyone equitably, we focus indeed on individualistic needs. In a diverse workplace, differences exist and people require support in different ways. Equity asks us to acknowledge that everyone has different needs, experiences and opportunities. So um, especially um, about people from marginalized groups or those at risk of exclusion uh, often have more, they, they have often more barriers to have overcome when accessing resources and opportunities and those from dominant or more than those from dominant and more privileged groups. Um, in a diverse organization, equity inspired design, uh, design uh, will identify barriers and these inequities and will help to elevate the people um, on the margin of an equal playing field. And if we can move and change the slide, please. I will show you very briefly. I'm not going into details because there are quite many of them. I wanted to show you actually our strategy uh, 2022, um, like four year strategy that we are operating under. Yeah. And um, by actually by 2022, um, StateSuite will be the leading provider of asset intelligence to the owners and managers of the world's capital. Uh, in by building an inclusive, diverse and equitable workplace uh, that uh, would help each of us uh, to deliver uh, for our colleagues and clients um, because we are absolutely client client centric as the organization. And we will have or we will implement and drive our inclusion, diversity and equity uh, through such four main dimensions. Uh, or, or rather steps, I would say. The first one is 
actually focus on inclusion, uh, which is obvious. And of course, it's a natural consequence of every high performing organization as, as we discussed today. Uh, the, the second one in our case will be to drive greater representation. And this is absolutely, um, I would say, key driver for us at the moment uh, because uh, not many people understand it. Uh, I mean, externally, um, because we want to improve um, greater representation of those that are not so present uh, and they are not so, um, you know, they do not constitute actually majority of people. So I'll give you examples of women uh, on senior positions, of course, employees of color, especially in the locations where the topic is very applicable. Uh, our headquarters is um, located in Boston, so as you can assume, of course, um, uh, the, the, the representatives of black and Latinx population are not so present, um, generally in financial sector, and there is so much to be done about it. In EMEA, we not only look at these aspects, but also people with disabilities and any other uh, groups um, of uh, at risk of social exclusion, as we, as I, I mentioned before. Uh, the, the next, the third um, way we want to go and drive the strategy is to broaden the diversity agenda. So moving f only from, let's say, global focus on race and ethnicity through um, sexual orientation, through sexual identity, uh, veteran status in some of our locations or disability status uh, is becoming more and more present in our company-wide conversations um, among managers and generally all population. And the final uh, way to implement uh, our strategy is actually through the equity lens to all human capital processes. Uh, we are beginning uh, this journey at the moment. Uh, so uh, we want to execute on our initiatives, for example, like diverse slate of candidates, where we are inviting uh, women and employees of color in the future, hopefully employees with disabilities into our recruitment process uh, for any position on AVP plus um, to make sure that they are at least the candidates are well represented. This is the equity we, we, we really understand and want to execute on. We are working on systemic solutions, for example, for people with individual needs, and I will tell you about it in a second. I'm conscious of time, so I will really um, speed up a little bit because I know that I will not make it <clears throat> in the time left. So if we can just jump two slides further, I will just give you a few examples of what we are doing as the employer of trust. Uh, you can see our values, the four uh, on, on the top, and a huge list of different initiatives. I will just highlight um, like maybe two or three that we are extremely proud of. Um, for example, um, the, 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 the way because we disc today discussed and mentioned by my colleagues a uh, few times that communication is very important. So exactly this is uh, our way of working on a daily basis. We organize a couple uh, of internal service, surveys um, with our employees that give us and them uh, anonymous and safe environment where they can share their feedback. And then we develop on actions um, like coming from, from the feedback. Uh, we all the time promote the culture of speak up and listen up, listen up more directed at managers who are, while asking all our staff uh, to, to speak up when they notice anything that is worrying them or you know, overcrossing the, the values or behaviors we expect. Mentoring and sponsor, sponsorship program this year, uh, actually last year, December, uh, we launched a uh, disability for disability mentoring program, quite a unique in the sector, where our employees with disabilities on senior positions are acting as mentors for the junior staff 
who is facing disability on the own or the, among the family members. Uh, we are very proud of this of this project and we have it open like working and anyone can join it at any point of time uh, during a year and self ID program, which is not so popular and not so present in Poland. And I think it's worth mentioning that we have uh, started with voluntary disclosure of personal diversity characteristics, um, enabling us um, as a company to better understand our demographics, giving at the same time uh, the employees and uh, the opportunity to feel one of the population, one of, you know, uh, great re re represented group, um, for example, very appreciated by people with disabilities that suddenly they realize that they are not only them, they are not only single individuals in such a big organization. Uh, through monitoring the statistics and the demographics, we are able to propose and implement different solutions according um, to the needs we encourage our groups of, of um, uh, in, employees to share again the feedback that he needs and co communicate it through various channels. I don't have time to go through each every one, but if you needed any um, more information, I'm absolutely happy to, um, to stay in touch and you can reach out to me, for example, via LinkedIn, and I'm happy to provide you with more details. If we move on, please, I will just show you another huge um, space that is important for us uh, because they are actually executing the inclusion, diversity and equity strategy that are employee networks. Uh, all of them are bottom-up in initiatives. Uh, all of them consist of passionate individuals. Uh, we have over 100 global chapters. These are just examples of the topics that we support. Uh, over 50 executive business sponsors um, support the, um, the, the employee networks across the globe and um, many of, of these networks, over 50 of them, are present across EMEA region, as you can see also on the map. And on the next slide, uh, you will be able to see the types of initiatives being executed through employee networks. Um, so we have everything starting with building awareness, um, workshops, webinars, um, senior leadership discussions, uh, um, leadership talks uh, and volunteering projects. Um, on those I will uh, focus in a minute as well. But as you can see, uh, we are quite present um, uh, different uh, dimensions of diversity and we try to, to really support various and diverse groups of individuals working for us. And if we move on, um, I'll show you, for example, the partners um, that are hand in hand um, executing with us the strategy around disability inclusion. Um, as you can see, there are many organizations also from Poland, also across or global partners, and we uh, work here in, in, in two different, um, or from two different perspectives. So one is Disability Awareness Alliance employee network uh, that is present across um, five EMEA locations at the moment. Uh, but also through the State Street Global Disability Task Force, um, engaging experts, internal experts, but also supported by, by these partner organizations in executing on a complex program to invite and also on board and enable all equal access to, um, you know, pr promotion, development, um, an equal pay for all the individuals with disabilities that are there on the market and would like to start the professional journey with us. And if we move on to the next slide, uh, I, I show you nothing new that you've seen on the previous slides of, of my colleagues. Uh, so a number of um, recognitions, a number of uh, different um, uh, awards that we have received. Um, so we are very present and we are actively uh, looking for, um, you know, confirmation of our efforts that 
we are doing the right things, not only to get, you know, a, a label, but also to, to reaffirm that what we are doing is also perceived as valuable externally because we get the feedback from, from our staff anyway. And if we move on, uh, just uh, two words about the project on the next slide, which is called Fearless at Work. This is an initiative that many of you might have heard. Um, I think and I find it as a crucial and key success uh, project uh, of State Street, where we work with Gazeta Wyborcza in Poland specifically, and we uh, organize multiple initiatives uh, uh, under a complex uh, project targeting women, targeting fearless women, uh, that despite the challenges that they face on a daily basis, they pursue their career, um, they are looking for fulfillment in their life. Um, and through different initiatives, we are able to promote these role models and really support uh, many of these fearless uh, women around us. And if we jump for a minute um, to the next slide, even next, I'd like to mention that except from our diversity and inclusion as per se initiatives, we also work in the space of community engagement and we have such a such a term and such a value actually uh, is a global force and local citizen where we uh, absolutely believe that with global financing, with global budgets, uh, and local engagement. We are able not only to shape our organization internally, but also shape our social environment that we operate in. That's why we are present globally in the form of State Street Foundation, except from our business operations, and we support granting program for different um, social partnering organizations. And we also um, provide such support in, in Poland for multiple organizations here, non-governmental organizations. And if we move on, uh, I'll show you the examples. Um, for, exam uh, for example, uh, one of our partners is Mom Work Foundation. I'm sure all of everybody knows that organization supporting women uh, returning to, to work. And along with them, we've developed, for example, mentoring program for such women where our employees, um, mainly managers, but not only, were uh, acting as mentors for, the, for younger women returning to work. Uh, it's, um, I think, the third edition of our initiative. And we can see a huge positive perception of uh, among young um, women applying for State Street as well through these uh, mentorship uh, re relations that they managed to to build um, throughout the, the the program. Um, the center of the women's right, um, both in Krakow and Gdańsk, are also our partners where we are more engaged into, let's say, um, support for women and whatever they do. Um, we we are also supporting them with with a grant program and are able to to really shape and and support different initiatives maybe not so much related to candidate pipeline but generally having a positive in, impact on the society on the next slide you see uh, related with parenthood but on the other hand targeting our let's say inside population of of staff a couple of initiatives or the conclusions that we came up with around parenthood. Um, as we started a few years ago, mainly with working moms, um, as our country is also developing, uh, we as organization uh, also are developing into the, the way of thinking that um, Actually, it's not only about mothers, but both parents. That's why we are expanding our focus area from mothers into really uh, parenthood. And we also are launching a series of initiatives um, supporting fathers, future fathers, current fathers, and also managers 
uh, because what we've noticed is the lack of understanding among managers that actually fathers want to be equally present in their um, families uh, for newly born or newly adopted children as mothers. So this is absolutely a, a huge step and I think maturity following the global trends as well, promoting um, family life, promoting life work balance and career of women that if only them uh, are having the you know, long absence from work is impacting their career. Whereas we strongly believe that if the, the, the long leaves can be shared, the effects will be absolutely less on women. And if we move to, to the next slide, I know that we are after time, but I will just show you what we are doing in terms of, of talent attraction. A couple of initiatives, as you can see, uh, open days, um, different initiatives. You probably know our fearless girl uh, that is also very much present in, in our branding on different occasions. Um, and two volunteering projects that probably I will not going to cover today, uh, Barriers Breaking Opportunity and Helping Hand. And these are examples of volunteering program initiatives targeting um, unemployed individuals on labor market, uh, looking for a change in their career or looking for new opportunities. Because, for example, they do have English language because they were working abroad, but never for corporate environment but they are ready to take on a challenge and start working with us. So as you can see, uh, there's a huge list of the things we are doing and I know I'm, I'm out of time. So I'd like to thank you very much. If there is anything um, interesting for you specifically, please feel free to reach out via LinkedIn. I'm happy to, to be in touch. Thank you. Monica, it was really inspiring. Thank you very much for sharing uh, State Street perspective and experience. Unfortunately, some of us already left as we run out of time and uh, we do not have a uh, this is yeah, time for today's session. What I can promise, as always, from my side, I will gather the answers to the questions uh, presented in the chat and set. Uh, through the whole meeting with us, this amazing initiative working together. Stay tuned for more information. We will be back next year. Thank you very much. Thanks.